Hey there guys. As you can see, we already have all our roofs and floor plates put in now. Um, if you don't have those yet, I'd strongly recommend that you go back, maybe review the previous lesson if you need to, and get them all ready to go. Because we're going to move on ahead in this lesson with annotations, family components, and how to establish rooms. So we're going to go ahead into the first floor plan, and as you can see, we've already dissected these areas. But now I want to start labeling them. So we'll go to the Architecture tab, and then go to Room, and then just start clicking into your areas. Uh, they don't have to be aligned, they don't have to be perfect, but you do want to make sure that you leave a spot for it. So just go on through and mark out all your rooms. Now when it comes to closets, that's really up to you whether you want to label it or leave it alone. Personally, I don't normally label closets. Alright, so once I'm done labeling everything in my first floor, I'm going to go ahead on up to the second floor and start labeling all my rooms there, too. Alright, and once you're done doing that, what you're going to want to do is go back to the first floor and start moving through all the rooms. Make sure no commands are selected, and then start clicking into the room to enter the name. So room 1 will be my dining room, room 2 will be my kitchen, uh, room 5 will be the living room, and I'm just going to move through these like that. And like I've said before, you don't have to model your house on exactly what I'm doing here. Uh, this is just to give you an idea of how these operations work. Your design should look like what you want it to look like. So you don't have to follow this precisely, just make sure you understand what we're doing. Now what I want to do is label a corridor over the living room, but that area is currently part of the living room. So what I'm going to do is go up to the room separator option, and then I'm going to draw a room separator line, splitting off the area I want to be the corridor from the rest of the living room. So it actually will hold the living room back and allow me to go up and label that corridor as another room. So I'll just go ahead and call this corridor, uh, the room separator line is a great tool, especially if you have one full area, but you want to separate it off into two separate zones. You can also use it to figure out areas or circulation paths, and this is true in both a small house on up to a big commercial building. Alright, so once you are done uh, labeling and defining your rooms, now what we're going to go in and do is add components. Now remember, if you want to add components, one thing you can always do is go to your web browser and then go to RevitCity.com. Like I've said, that's one of my personal favorite sites for Revit. And then you can download all sorts of different components. So I'll go up to Downloads and I'll search for a dining table. Um, you'll have to log in now, and remember, it's totally free to join Revit City. So remember, take advantage of the resources that are available to you. This website has thousands, possibly even millions of different components, and even though they may not always have exactly the component that you want or need, there will always be something that you can work from, a starting component. And in the intermediate course, we'll show you how you can edit those to get exactly what you want. So I'll go ahead and take my dining room table, and I will just place it right in the dining room. Now if you don't want to download components, you can always go up to the Architecture tab, click Load Family, and Load In Components. So if I want a toilet, I'll go to Plumbing, Fixtures, Water Closet, and then I can load in a toilet. So I'll go with the domestic toilet and in 3D. Uh, go ahead and double click on that, and then I will just go ahead and drop that in the bathroom. Um, be aware that while this component is free floating, meaning you can just place it, you may have to deal at times with components that are going to be hosted. Um, examples of these would be things like light fixtures, um, certain sofas, pretty much anything that might grab onto a wall, a floor, or a ceiling. So just be aware of that as you begin adding components to your plan. Um, also remember that you can hide any component 
by right clicking on it and going to hide in view and then selecting element or category. So at this point I want to start going through and actually dimensioning all of the different rooms in my house. Because having the layout is fine, uh, knowing that your basement or your dining room looks like that is great, but when you begin construction they actually need to have the real dimensions to begin building. So in order to begin laying out the dimensions on your plan, you'll go up to the Annotate tab, and you have a wide variety of different annotations to choose from. There's aligned, linear, angular, radial, diameter, arc length, and you can also do spot elevations to check how tall your project is, to figure out where a floor plate is. And you can even do that on the second floor. Uh, if we go there and place one of those, it shows us that the second floor is at 10 feet. And you can use any of the annotations in plan, section, or elevation view. So I'll select aligned, and personally I like to have my annotations run all the way through. So what I'll do is just click my way through each room, which will give us each room's dimension, but all in a line. Now if while you're going through you accidentally click somewhere that you don't want, all you have to do is click again on that spot and it'll automatically undo that point that you just placed. So you don't have to delete the whole line just to get rid of one bad point, you just have to click on it. So I'm going to go ahead and finish drawing my dimensions through the rest of this floor. Okay. Now, as I've discussed previously, uh, sometimes I like to make things a little bit more equal. And with these annotations, there's a really great way to do that. So all you have to do is click on the endpoint of one thing you want. So I'll just move on through here, clicking on the center of the windows and the doors. Um, because I have two doors here technically, I may want them to be exact. So once I've laid out the lines that I want, I'm going to go ahead and click Equal. Um, it might remove my door constraints, but that's fine for now. Alright, and then if I go and unclick Equal, it will spread everything out evenly. Um, I didn't want my doors that far apart, though. But this process does at least set my windows and doors equidistant. So now I'll just go ahead and delete that dimension, and move my door back over. Uh, you guys would probably want to use a double door here. I used two doors just for demonstration purposes here, but with a double door you can actually recenter it in and of itself as one unit. So with all these annotation tools and lines, you can really start going around your entire project and capturing all the different information that makes up your overall plan. Alright, that's it for this time, and I'll see you in the next lesson.